Hey, Joe Gilder here. I've got an export mix down checklist for you today. Write this on a sticky note, stick it on your monitor uh, to help you remember to do these every time you export something from the song page. So here's the song page. When I'm working on a song, there are lots of times where I will export the song directly from here using the export mix down feature. Right now, when I'm doing a full project and going on to mastering, I'll export this into a project, which is our mastering suite, and then I'll do a lot of the work from there. But when I'm working on a like one off projects or something I'm just kind of playing around with, and I want to send a quick mix to my buddy to check out or to the bass player to get his approval, or I'm going to upload it to Studio One Plus to get feedback from other members. There, are, I want to make sure you do all of these things or you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot. So the first thing on the list is a limiter. Make sure you've added a limiter to the end of your chain. Now, this isn't mastering per se, but if you export a mix down, mix downs in general are typically a good bit quieter than a finished mastered project. If you're sending a mix down, especially to, let's say, a client, they sent you their tracks, you're mixing for them. If you send them mix one for them to give you feedback and they listen to it and it's quiet and they've got to crank their headphones or they've got to crank it in their car and it's a lot quieter than everything else they hear on Spotify or Apple Music, they're going to, if, even if they don't say it, they're going to have a bad taste in their mouth. You're going to be starting off on the wrong foot. They're not going to really have much in the way of notes for you on the mix because it's just too quiet. Now, we could get on our high horse and say they should understand that this is mixed and not mastered. It will sound... Don't get in that adversarial relationship with the client. It doesn't help. It just makes you seem like a know-it-all, and they also think you don't know what you're talking about. Rather than doing that, here's what I do. I put a limiter on my main output over here in the post section, and I turn it on right before I export it down, and I typically do this. I add about 6 dB. Feel free to screenshot this to copy this in your settings. I have it set to K14 metering, so I'm looking at the meters here. And I'm checking, I'm adding about six decibels of gain, ceiling minus one, threshold minus one. And I'm looking for the signal to cross over the zero mark pretty much for the whole song. In the loudest sections of the song, like over here at the final chorus, I want it to be hitting in the red. That's roughly how I set the levels for mastering. But this isn't mastering, this is just getting the volume up so that they don't freak out at how quiet it is. I promise you may think I shouldn't have to do this, fine, but do it because it's going to make your life so much easier when dealing with the people who are listening to this. This isn't the final version. For the final version, you should do a proper mastering job, but for exporting it to send to other people, I highly recommend doing this. Step two on our export mix down checklist, make sure you've got your range set correctly. So if I open up the window, command E opens up this export mix down window. It's uh, control E on the PC. There's an export range section here. And typically for me, I've got it set up to export between the song start and end markers. If you don't know what those are, you probably don't have it set up correctly. Let's come back out here. Do we see any song start or end markers in our song? No, we don't. Why? Because we don't have our markers visible. So come up here to this section. And I zoomed in too far. And make sure you're showing the marker track. It's just this extra little track that shows up up here. This is where all your markers go for your different sections of your songs, however you want to do that. But most importantly, there are these blue start and end markers in your song. Now, if you don't adjust them, the song is going to export from the start at the very beginning of the session and the end, which is at like something like four or five minutes, which means, practically speaking, this is what your client will hear when you send them the mix down, hey, I'm so excited about this mix. Let me know your feedback. They get excited. They open it up. They press play. And here it comes. Now they're happy, but it took a good, what, six seconds to get there? That is a bad user experience for them. They don't want to hear the little sounds beforehand, and then finally the song coming in. You tip Occasionally, maybe that's the case, but there was nothing interesting happening here. What they want to hear is they press play, and they hear this. That's what they want to hear, which means I just need to move my start marker to here. So somewhere like about right there. Now, when Studio One exports it, there won't be a bunch of blank space at the beginning, which leaves a bad taste in everyone's mouth. It works. Same thing with the end marker. Don't leave an extra three minutes of sound at the end. Just bring your end marker up to there. Kind of a quick tip. I use this all the time. If you know where your start and end points are going to be, you can select them by selecting, let's say, a region. And you can just press, I believe it's option Y. And that sets the start and end markers to whatever event you have selected. 
So that sent the start back to the beginning because I selected it like that. But if the event was this size and I selected it, option Y, which is Alt Y on the PC, sets that to exactly the start and end point of this specific event. I do that a lot when I'm setting my start and end markers. All right, step three of our checklist is to make sure you put a timestamp in the file name. I know you think you'll never forget which one is which, but we are busy people and naming things like mix one, mix two, mix 47 for real this time or 46, um, that, that gets old and you start to like, takes you forever to sift through your projects. Don't do that. For me, everything that I do, starts with a timestamp. So if I were to say, you know, let's say this is on, let's say I mix this down on the 1st of January, 2024, then I can put the name of the song. Uh, this song is called Last to Know. And then I could put something like Mix One. That's fine. The timestamp is what really helps. So when I export this, that's the first thing that shows up. Does it look great? No. But for me, when I've got a folder full of mix downs, if I sort by name, it automatically sorts by date, even if, because I know the files should have their creation date embedded in the metadata, but that doesn't always work. So having them like this, where I can sort wherever they are and find the, the earliest one and the latest one, depending on how I sort, that to me is worth its weight in gold. Plus I can, at a glance, look at a folder and see, man, I haven't worked on this song in three months. Let's get it together. Um, so always add timestamps to the beginning, whatever format works for you. I like the year, month, date version, because then it sorts it in order. And versus versus putting the month first and then it sorts by and that just gets weird. So put the date first, um, add some timestamps to everything that you do. It'll make your life easier. Final piece of the puzzle is right here. This format section. Uh, you can now, we've advanced, we've really improved this section of the export window quite a bit over the years. So you can now do things like export a 16-bit WAV file in addition to a... 16-bit AIFF file, or a lot of people might do a WAV file and also an MP3 file. If you're sending it off to people to check out, MP3 is great for that. Just please, for the love of everything, don't export it like this. Make sure it is not set to something like 64 kilobits per, sec per second or even 128. If you set it to 64, it will sound so, so, so bad, and no one will ever work with you ever again. Probably not, but Set it to 320. 320 sounds fantastic. 64 sounds terrible. Yes, it makes a small file, but who cares how what the file size is if the file sound is terrible. Make sure that this is set to 320. Yeah, just, just trust me on this. I've had so many people send in mixes and say, yeah, it sounded better in, in Studio One, but then I rendered it down and the symbols sound all weird and it just sounds terrible. Sometimes the reason for that is they exported it at 64 kilobits per second and it just it, it it's it's doing data compression so it's taking away lots of data and information to make a small file and the sad thing is it makes it sound terrible so um there's a reason why we have this i don't know what that reason is but do this do 320 your life will be better because of it all right that is the checklist maybe write that down keep it handy so you don't fall into some of these traps none of these are life-threatening of course but when it comes to doing things well doing things consistently, and whoever you're sending this to, you want to leave a good taste in their mouth. Avoid these mistakes, and you'll be in good shape. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.